um, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, I hope I'm audible and uh, the screen is visible. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, um, I would like to cut, I mean, uh, Kevin has set up a, a very good platform for my presentation and for us to share uh, our perspective in relation to fire safety in tall buildings. Um, so uh, myself, Srinivas, what I will be covering is some fundamentals in relation to um, the first principles for fire, a critical uh, uh, interface between a curtain wall assembly uh, like we see on any unitized systems or six systems, but also I'll be covering how to control for spread of fire in external facade assemblies. Moving ahead, uh, uh, before going into a detailed presentation, I would like to give uh, uh, a perspective from SiteRise where um, we have seen lots of uh, countries which is having, uh, which is having um, regulations which is set that if there is an active systems uh, available on a project or a detection system available on a project, you don't need to put a passive fire protection system on, the, on any of the projects, so it can be exempted. So this kind of approach has to be more of a balanced approach. Passive fire protection is very important in relation to um, uh, giving time for the occupants to leave the building and go to a safer place. Uh, and this, and uh, any active system is required in relation to uh, suppressing the fire and putting it down. So it's, it has to be a balanced approach. So uh, moving into two main categories, we have been hearing about the word fire stop, fire stop, fire resistant, um, fire rated. So uh, 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 to clear out these terms, uh, there are only two terms. One is reaction to fire and another one is resistance to fire. When we say reaction, it's how a material will react to fire uh, when it comes in contact with fire. For example, how a wood will react, how a paper will react, or, how uh, an aluminum cladding panel will react, but also you have resistance to fire, which is ideally when um, uh, when you put a system together, for example, a fire door, how long that the system or the door can stop fire from spreading a fire from the exposed side, wherever there is fire to the non-exposed side. So that is what is fire resistance. And uh, we have various test standards. We have seen um, uh, presentations in relation to testing, but fire testing is also uh, a very important. Um, um, when we test for a reaction to fire, we get A1, A2 classification, which is commonly spoken in the facade industry. Uh, the test standards are 13501 for combustibility to check how the classification or what the classification of fire is. Uh, you also have a BS standard, ASTM standard, or, or an AS standard, or Australian standard as well. But when we are talking about resistance to fire, it is important to understand that it is about uh, yeah, the time. So it's always measured in 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, or 120 minutes. So uh, there are again various test standards. You have an American standard, you have an EN standard, you have a British standard, you have an Australian standard, but um, you have an ISO standard. But all these use are uh, the similar results or similar time temperature curve, but everything gives a result in 30 minutes or, or FNT rating or um, FRL rating, for example, or integrity and insulation rating. So that is the difference between fire resistance and reaction to fire. These are the two main terms that uh, uh, somebody who is uh, um, actively working in the facade industry should relate to. Okay, so how are the tests are done, whatever I have mentioned. So this is a test for AS1530.4, which we recently did in Australia. Uh, you can see the concrete floor slabs and you can see a perimeter barrier or a linear gap seal material installed. Now, in relation to a resistance to fire, uh, the sample is tested for the time period what a manufacturer wants to test, whether it is... Uh, okay, so um, I think you can see the screen now. Sorry about it. Um, so this is a test which we recently done in Australia. You can see a floor slab where um, uh, a concrete floor slab between which a perimeter barrier or a linear gap seal is uh, installed. 
this is to test the product for whatever rating a manufacturer would need. Uh, but it is tested between two concrete pro slabs. Uh, what we are talking today is in relation to how a perimeter barrier, which is installed between a curtain wall assembly and a floor slab is installed. So there are um, further tests that are required to test these uh, to, the sim uh, to the arrangement. So, because there are limitations always in relation to the length of the specimen that you test, or you don't have curtain wall, you don't test the movement capabilities of the product. So, uh, when we talk about this void, the important material that we see is in relation to uh, 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 the application of a product or the characteristics of a product is very much related to stone wool. And uh, the reason why we use stone wool is it has a very good resistance to fire. It has a good thermal value, resistance longer period that it can resist thermal insulation. Uh, water, it repels water. Um, and it gives us a dimensional stability and also up, uh, can accommodate some movement when installed correctly. And it is also good in relation to absorption of sound. Another point is uh, we spoke about various tests. They use the same time temperature curve, but it is also important to say that the resistance or the time temperature curve for uh, the stone wool to perform is very high at a very high temperature. Uh, we all use galvanized tray and say that it can stop smoke or it can stop fire, but uh, when we put the product into testing for an uh, image that I showed you of a testing, if you put a galvanized tray, the metal will get hot, it would transfer the heat immediately. So um, ideally, when uh, um, uh, steel cannot be a good resistance to fire product because it will, it will resist fire but not heat. And with heat, it will get become flexible and it might lose its um, um, characteristics. So what are we talking again? A gap between a floor slab and an external facade assembly. There are other types of compartmentation for passive fire protection, which we will not be covering in this presentation. Um, so this is the, so the primary definition of a perimeter barrier is extension of a floor slab properties, which is a fire property of the floor slab to the rear of the facade. So uh, we have also seen an increase in Middle East and European countries where a performance to the spandrel or a protection to the spandrel is required. So how does the fire spread? There are two, two routes. One is an internal spread of fire through the passage, which is between the floor slab and external facade. Or you can also have a leapfrog effect where a fire can break a glass and move through the uh, next glass to inside. So this which is called as a leapfrog effect, which we commonly use in the facade industry. So uh, there are two, uh, uh, two routes to fire spread. So that is why the performance of the spandrel to fire is very important compared uh, to uh, only the perimeter barrier in application. Okay, so uh, what does the countries or the code say in the region? So one is Singapore, uh, which I'm highlighting here is where they say a curtain wall test or a product should be tested to ASTM E2307. And it also says that there has to be an audit which has to be done annually on the product of the manufacturer who's supplying the system. We also have Hong Kong, for example. Hong Kong uses uh, 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 1364, which is an EN standard. We have um, also UAE, which I have put in, which says that you can use an ASTM or a EN standard. Uh, we also have Malaysia, which says that you can use a BS standard as per the UBBL. So how, did, how, is the, how are the products tested is what you see here. There are two types of major uh, 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 testings. One is an ASTM E2307 and an EN1364 part four test. Uh, both test the perimeter barrier uh, performance, but in an EN standard, it's a closed chamber test. So uh, as the previous speaker, uh, uh, Jonathan spoke, uh, it's also uh, important to understand that this particular furnace can give, um, <coughs> uh, can give a pressure inside uh, to create a pressure on the facade. 
Okay, so uh, this is how a test is done, which is an external facade for a 2307 test, where you see an image before the test, after the test, and this is a view from inside. So you can see the perimeter barrier installed and a protected spandrel. Uh, this is how a 1364 part four test is done. Again, a, a facade is protected and you, you do not have a window here, but you test only the spandrel and the flow slab arrangement, the interface. It is also important to know that you test for the void size and you get a listing, but uh, we also have seen documents like engineering judgments, which come in that you can test for a 100 mm gap and extrapolate it to 200 or 300 mm gap. But an approach where you test for the largest gap should be adopted so that you have uh, evidence of performance and not go back to a desktop study which says that it might pass or it is uh, um, uh, it can pass. So uh, uh, use a system or a listing which as close to as close as possible and do not mix multiple listings is what uh, I would recommend uh, on a project to give evidence of performance. Uh, these standards are important because, um, as the previous speaker spoke, we see the movement on buildings, we see the wind pressure, we see uh, thermal movement on the floor slab. So the products that you install between the floor slab and the rear of the facade has to accommodate movement when the facade might move or the floor slab might move. So both the standards say that you need to test the material for cycling. Again, on an ASTM standard, you can the combined is 330 cycles per minute to 100 cycles in total. But in an ASTM EN standard, you do 500 cycles uh, at 30 cycles per minute. So a, a quick video about how uh, cycling is done. So you can see the floor slab, the facade, and the material installed, which accommodates the movement. Uh, it is important to know again the same specimen and the same system without dismantling or changing any material is tested for fire for the time period that is one hour or two hour, whatever the manufacturer is willing to achieve. Um, so what we do at SiteRise, so we buy insulation to a certain recipe which is owned by us from a single source manufacturer and then convert the material to uh, suit the application. So we are a single source where you don't need any additional layers of coating or any system, which I will cover in the next slides. So we are uh, so we go through a unique manufacturing process where the material is converted and designed to adopt to the requirement of a perimeter barrier application. Again, there are multiple systems available in the market, but as I said earlier, a GI tray system cannot go through the previous tests that I have shown in relation to giving the performance. Uh, the second test, second, uh, you have a two part system where you install an insulation and put a smoke seal on top. Uh, the only challenge that I see in this is the supplier of the insulation and the supplier of the smoke seal is different. So you have two different warranties, two different um, companies who are coming together and built at site where you, uh, as a finished system, you might not have get a single ownership for the installed material. Uh, and then we have a side race system, which is uh, uh, a dry system and a one part system where we can uh, go through the full life cycle of a project and a single source manufacturer. Uh, under a two-part system, again, uh, the challenge that we have is, as I said, the insulation, all insulations are not same. Um, uh, manufactured in Malaysia to manufactured in India might not be the same. Uh, so it is very important that a system test used with the same material uh, from the same plant has to be used for the projects as well, uh, which is listed. Uh, so this is the process that is currently adopted on a two-part system where we buy insulation, we cut it, rotate it 90 degrees and pre -com and compress it at site in 30%, 33% or 25% or 55% depending on the listing and then put a smoke seal on top. So what we at SideRise have done is to eliminate all this with removing the rotation, removing the compression 
and uh, doing everything in the factory and supplying it as a finished product where you measure the gap, cut the material with 10% extra for additional compression, which is in relation to undulations or uh, any type of uh, uh, a void uh, gap, which may not be even. Uh, install a side rise bracket and install it to the void. So it's, it's a single source um, a dry system, which is very fast in installation. And you do not have to worry about whether the rock wool is from the same plant. Uh, you don't have challenges in relation to whether it's installed in the right direction uh, because it's all controlled uh, in the factory to give a finished product. So uh, finishing off on this, you get a COC for the system from UL, Intertech, Warrington, depending on the certification bodies, uh, where they come back to the factory and audit. Uh, it's a single source compliant system and uh, uh, another point which is which would support is a vertical compartmentation that the product is installed uh, for which can work from both directions so from the curtain wall internal spread of fire we move to another challenging uh, challenging uh, requirements and uh, what we have faced in out in the market so we have seen lots of projects that have gone on fire with external cladding, where you can see the fire which has started on a low floor, raising to the top of the building in a in few minutes. For example, the one uh, the one in between has started, and when we forward it to three minutes, you see the fire already reaching the roof. So the spread of fire is very fast. Uh, the image on the video on the right is very popular. Everyone watched it live when there was a fire in Dubai uh, during the New Year's Eve uh, in 2016, 2016 when it began. So the challenges are how it spreads. Uh, so what we at SideRise offer is a compartmentation, but it all depends on how the external cladding also works. So it is a system test. Uh, in when it is installed with the correct product as a linear gap seal. Uh, we have also seen various material types being used. Um, Kevin also highlighted about stainless steel, for example, being used in facades. Uh, lots of cladding material like terracotta, ceramic um, uh, have been used and GRC is very popular and stone cladding is also very popular. Um, so these have to go through a system test um wherein for example uh, you test to an nfp8285 standard which is in relation to uh, the american standard uh, you also test to a astm standard which is in relation to or sorry a bs standard which is 8414 part 1 or part 2 which is very uh, which is a mandatory requirement now in malaysia for example an image on how a compartmentation needs to be followed which is horizontal and vertical compartmentation, protecting the windows. Um, so you have a product which is for a ventilated facade if you are using, you have it with an intumescent, which expands when it comes in contact with fire and it closes the void. Uh, so it reduces, uh, it gives time and reduces the spread of fire through the chimney to the higher floors. Uh, so an image from the laboratory, from the test that we had done, this is a 2017 image. So you see how it is installed with, uh, this was with a phenolic thermal insulation and you can see the cavity barriers installed and a cladding on top. Uh, once the test is complete, when we remove the panels, you see the intumescent expanded. You can see the reaction of the insulation below and above the cavity barriers. You also see how the cavity barrier vertically installed has protected the insulation on the other side as well. So uh, moving into uh, testings, uh, we at SideRes have tested around 250 different systems uh, where we have tested different manufacturers, different combinations of material, different void size, um, different um, uh, material types, different uh, countries uh, from where the materials are manufactured. Um, and we have also, uh, this is on the right, you see a test which is done in Siren Laboratory in Malaysia, where uh, again, an 8414 test. Um, one thing to note also is uh, this is a wooden crib, which means there is more pressure 
uh, sorry, more fire, the calorific value is very high. Uh, you can also see that because we tested in Malaysia, we tested without thermal insulation because we don't use thermal insulation commonly uh, in tropical climates. Um, we have also tested with high pressure laminates also. So any material combination type where you would like to know what the result was or how it performed, we would be very happy to share. Um, it's a, and we go into certifications to say that it is important to go through a certification partner where uh, we have chosen all three commonly used where they come to factory. Once we test, they do a repeat factory audit. Um, uh, two certificates just for reference from certifier from Warrington. We also have a UL certification for the product and systems. Very happy to share if it's required. Um, we go a step further to, to support end users by providing audit reports, which can be downloaded through our app on App Store or Play Store. Uh, you enter the project details and answer a series of questions in relation to installation of the product you get an audit report from SideRise. So wherever you are doing a project in the world, you can do an audit on a product and get a compliance immediately. Uh, so I want to end uh, my presentation with saying, uh, sharing three themes. One, think ahead. So uh, once we start the building and if we are thinking about facade compartmentation or fire compartmentation, Sometimes it might be too late for us to do uh, to provide the uh, uh, updates on buildings. Uh, change of use. Uh, this pandemic has taught taught everybody too many things, and one of the thing is change of use. We have seen hospitals uh, are being uh, being uh, sorry hotels being converted into hospitals. So it is very important that the change of use does not affect the performance. Uh, or, or sorry the Change of use does not affect affect the building type. So, design uh, our design and compartmentation and fire compliance should be common for any type of building, irrespective of residential, commercial, hotels, anything. And uh, choosing the right product, we are not building uh, constructing buildings for two years or five years. We are looking at seventy years or ninety years. So, the buildability. Uh, is important and once it is built correctly the service is important uh, the life cycle of the products are important that it can perform even at uh, touch with the life cycle uh, during the life cycle of the building we don't come across any fires but the product has to perform years ahead so uh, the building uh, buildability and the correct compliance is required when we are doing it right the first time. There is no going back and correcting a passive fire protection installation. So uh, this is it from me. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, I'll over to Sarah to take it. Thank you very much for this opportunity.